good one. Um, did any of you have any, uh, did you have to ask to join the executive team because you were not initially included? And if so, um, what uh, did you have any strategies um, that you used or justifications to be added to the team? So it, this is, I'm throwing this out there to the group. Did anybody have a situation where they were not initially invited to the team? Okay, Brooke, let's hear from you. Yeah, twice, actually. One was uh, a situation where I was just outright lied to in the interview process. Um, and so when Ooh. I wasn't, I know, <laughs> I didn't last very long. Um, but when I, I kept asking, I kept asking, finally was told, stop asking, it won't happen. Um, so that was a disappointment, as you might imagine. The other was actually my current company where it was the two co-founders who were the kind of the executive team, if you will. And um, I would ask and was told as we're building out the team, when I get a CFO, when I get a chief, chief engineer, that type of thing, we will put together an executive team. Um, and so as that, those folks started to build out, um, then the, the exec team did come together. And one of the things that I made sure, um, from str strategy wise, I made sure that the, that the CEO knew two main things about me. One, I have no ulterior motive. My motive is the company and the protection of the company. And the second is, um, I have his back. I'm not just there for the company, but I have his back. So one of an example of that was the we have the he runs the commercial side, the CTO runs the tech side. The tech side was going to undergo an employee review process, but commercial they were going to do it on their own. And we didn't have a people group yet. And I said to him, You, you can't you can't do that. You can't not run a an employee review process for your team. You're going to look really bad and you're going to get a lot of complaints. And he's like, I just don't have the time for this. I said, well, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. And I sat him down. We ran through. I am not good at that. <laughs> I made a few <laughs> mistakes and we shortly hired a people officer after that. But he said to me, "You, I, can, I know that you have my back. I know that you're here to make sure I look good not just from a legal perspective, but from a CEO company perspective. And I think him knowing, I like to, you know, I grew up across the street from the Godfather house. So I like to say, you know, my role is to be the conciliary, right? And, you know, protect, protect the, 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 the Godfather. So I think for me, it was important for him, for him to know I had his back. Oh, that's great. That's a great answer. Anybody else have anything to share on this question? I, I was not initially, uh, and actually my predecessor was not a member of the executive team. Um, and so it, it actually was not a difficult transition for me to get on. I think, you know, I think as it was happening, I kind of just more just made it clear. I thought it was important for, you know, me stepping into the role that I thought legal and, you know, I oversee compliance as well, needed a real seat at the table given what the company, you know, what the company was doing, like the growth we were having. Um, you know, and, and the business we were in. And so it, it wound up not being a very hard conversation. But yeah, I mean, for, I guess for a couple of months, I was, I was not or something like that. But um, yeah, it was, it's, it's been a, since that has happened, it's been transitional, right? In terms of like, you know, those first few months when I was there, it was very much just in listening mode. because I was kind of the new, new person in the group. Uh, but that's evolved over time. So 